As a freelance video producer, I'm always looking for ways to increase the production value of any live stream I'm producing. When I first got the Yolobox Pro, it added a new aspect to my live streams, whether that was simply pressing the live button with a single camera to more in-depth productions with playback. Now we have the Yolobox Extreme, which isn't just an upgrade, it's an evolution. The Yolobox Extreme offers what I think is now a complete solution for live streamers who are looking for a physical switcher without bringing in any external software to run a stream in up to 4K, a massive step up from the Pro version, which caps at 1080, and one that brings this device firmly in line with competing devices, is director mode. Five 4K HDMI inputs with three 1080 HDMI inputs and two outputs which are customizable. So not only is this a switcher though, it's a recorder with four 4K ISO recordings that can be made. The program can be recorded as well, but if you don't get any local videos or PDFs or images recorded as ISO files, because they're already on the SD card, but they are baked into the program output. Behind all of this is the Android architecture. My favorite part of this is it now has a built-in network speed test, so you don't need to install a separate app to test your network speed capabilities. As this is a mix of software combined with hardware, it effectively replaces a computer. If you have a YouTube stream, you can bring your stream comments directly in without the need of any extra software. But the Yolo Live software itself has evolved from the Pro version. You can scale sources so that you can more easily see what you're switching to. You can happily see your CPU power, so you can make sure you're not going over the 80% mark, which means that you might start dropping frames, but by far, it's a far faster processor than its predecessors. You can bring in up to five guests into your stream via an email link, to instant replay, chroma key, backgrounds live. There's a far greater audio interface under all of this as well. Honestly, it's the most powerful Yolo box that I've used to date. So I've very broadly discussed the headline features of the Yolo box Extreme, but there are a lot of exciting developments with this. But what about the Yolo box Extreme has really piqued my interest. Well, it all stems from using other live stream recorders and encoders, notably the ATEM Mini Extreme, which is a 1080p recorder. So it's meant that if I want to have a 4K recording, I need to record in camera and replace the tracks in post, which the time sensitive uploads is not ideal for me. There was also the issue of graphics, building lower thirds and countdown timers on a laptop and have them as a source overlay is Perfectly doable, of course, but to have them pre-built into what I'm doing and not have to take up an input, I mean, that's fantastic. But the biggest part of what made me have to use switches like the ATEM was the multi-view with the dual HDMI outputs. With the Extreme, I've now got dual HDMI outputs and so much more, which makes this a real workhorse for me. The output of these HDMI ports is independent of what you have set your streaming parameters or your recording parameters have. So you might have 4K sources and do a 4K internal recording, but your stream could still be in 1080p. This was given a major update in firmware version 1.8.8, which literally solved every headache I've ever had with the Yolobox HDMI outputs. On the Yolobox Pro, and until this firmware version on the Extreme, it was limited to either 5997 or what the Yolobox interpreted the HDMI output source as, which caused no end of grief. It's all been fixed, and I genuinely can't complain at all. Even the dreaded will this work with Atomos devices has been fixed, as that's what I'm using to record the output of the screen here. When first booting up the Extreme, you are presented with the classic layout. Uh, if you've used Yellowbox products before, you'll be right at home. So up here in the cog menu, you can go over and at the top it says classic mode, and I will now change that to director mode. The biggest benefit of this is that you can have a larger screen version of your show in a full preview with a bigger screen and leaves an HDMI port free for the program. But 
if you don't want to utilize two different monitors, say one is a confidence monitor, you still have this fantastic interface on the Yolobox Extreme without the need for external monitors. You can absolutely use external monitors, but you can just get away with this. Honestly, it's what my brain has fought against with the A10 mini line for so long and has led to multiple HDMI splitters. I don't need those now. Inside of director mode, you'll have all of the functionality that you would have in classic mode. You can still go in and preset to bring in external sources. You can pull up a video from the SD card. And all of this is visible out on the multi-view. The multi-view itself is extremely customizable. The way I like to set up the multi-view is a rather traditional preview program, recording info, and then leave these two below for any additional sources. And this is what my multi-view setup normally looks like. Just on a little desk for live stream mode, and obviously there are normally more cables coming out of the back of it, but just for the purposes of this, this is how it looks in this setup. I still really like this new implementation. And then here on the multi-view, you can see when it switches. I'm not new to the world of live streaming. I have an A10 Mini Extreme, an Atomos Ninja Cast, and a Yolobox Pro. And they all play a part in my live stream productions. I've tried to move away from full software solutions like vMix or OBS simply because I prefer to use as much hardware as possible, especially when live streams start to go wrong. My live streams aren't traditionally over YouTube. They are mostly for companies who stream out to Zoom or to Teams, and they tend to be delivered via USB-C. The Yolobox Pro in my live streams, while it can be used as the main engine, has been far more useful for me as a media driver, such as bringing in pre-recorded videos or other laptops to a stream where the graphics overlay has been needed. Also having a built-in countdown timer has been unbelievably useful. I know that's a bit like using a race car as a people carrier, but that's honestly how I've used it, as I've always needed more than three HDMI ports. Usually it's about six, which is why the ATEM has been my go-to. The Yolobox Extreme does change how I plan our live stream productions. I can now have all eight sources preloaded and ready to go with one system. And I can still have a similar setup to what I had before. I have my control unit, I have my multi-view, my program out, and I can still utilize the USB-C port to allow an easy plug and play into Zoom or Teams. Honestly, it's all I've wanted. USB-C output on the Yolobox Extreme is complicated. And it's complicated because of operating systems. And by that, I mean the difference between Mac and Windows. On Windows, the Yolobox Extreme performs exactly as you would expect it to perform through the USB-C port connected up to your computer using the included USB-C to USB-A cable. Um, or use a high-speed USB-C cable PC. Then open up your streaming software of choice, whether that's OBS, Teams, or Google Meet, and the Yolobox Extreme will work flawlessly. Zoom is its own problem. Through the USB-C port, you're not going to get any audio being interpreted by Zoom whatsoever. This is a Zoom problem, as this happens on both Mac and Windows. So if you want to use the Yolobox Extreme through Zoom, my recommendation is actually you use one of the HDMI outputs and run it into a Camlink 4K in order to get the best signal out of the Yolobox Extreme and crucially audio out of the Yolobox Extreme into Zoom. When setting up USB-C output on the Yellowbox Extreme, you need to go to the cog in the top right here, and you need to come down to USB-C out. You need to make sure that this is enabled, and it needs to be enabled before you plug in a USB-C cable and before you plug it into your device that's going to be receiving a USB-C 
signal. If you don't do this, there's going to be a whole myriad of problems that are encountered when you do it. So ensure that is checked. Flip horizontal down here. I only ever enable this when I'm using Google Meet, as Google Meet, for some reason, flips the image of your webcam. With Zoom, especially on Mac, come down to the HDMI out, and here you'll see I've got Output 2 selected, and it's running into a CamLink 4K, and I can select the resolution either via the 1080 or 720p. If I go back to the USB-C out menu, you're going to see that there is not a menu item that dedicates what the maximum resolution is going to be out of the USB-C port. Okay, as the title of this video suggested, it is only a first impressions video, but over the coming months, I will be going into greater detail on a number of the new features of the Yellowbox Extreme. If you've made it this far, then YouTube recommends you watch this video next. And thanks for watching this first impressions video of the Yellowbox Extreme.